Hey guys, it's Ryan with Crown Python. So I figured I'd sit down tonight, take a few minutes, and talk to you about glass tanks. Now, glass tanks are probably the most common enclosure used in the reptile world. They are cheap, they're readily available, and most people think they're really easy to set up. And they can be, however, they do come with some pitfalls. Now, most tanks aren't going to be like this front opening deal I've got here. They're going to be a fish tank style solid sides, mesh lid, some sort of way to lock it down, make it secure. Um, the problem is glass is a horrible insulator. Um, most older homes had glass single pane windows and the heating bill for them is outrageous. The newer homes, double pane windows, they insulate properly. And in our day-to-day -day life, it's easy enough to see this because if you take a cold glass of whatever you like to drink out of the fridge, you put it in a glass, set it out on your deck on a hot day, you can watch the condensation. This is the heat transferring to the other side of the glass, which is also why when these enclosures get cool, we see the same effects of the condensation. We'll see them on the inside of the enclosure, however, not the outside because the heat is transferring inward. Now there are some ways to make these a little bit better, so we're going to try and go through a few simple ways to make these better, as well as a few of the options and why they work or don't work very well. Now when we talk about substrates, there's a few different options. I mean, there's a lot of people that keep a lot of animals. They swear by paper towels, newspaper, plain newsprint, something like that. Some people use puppy pads, there's arguments about them. I find that most people that keep their snakes in glass tanks, like so many people, use aspen. Now aspen is good for some species. It has a tendency to pull the humidity out of the air, however, so when we're talking about boa constrictors and pythons that like a humidity level up around 60%, I can tell you that where I am on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, our ambient humidity is in our home is generally about 40%, which means we need to bump it up. So something like this. I like cocoa husk, the big chunks. You could also use a cypress blend, cypress blend like forest floor. Anything like that, which is going to contribute to the humidity as opposed to take it out of the air. This does great for colubrids. This is wonderful for almost every species. I've kept colubrids on it. I keep just about everything on the cocoa. I just chew very the saturation of it when I put it in. Okay, so since we've got some substrate in here, we've got a thin layer of cocoa husk across the bottom. Next thing on the agenda is going to be to talk about some heat sources. Now, the first heat source is going to be the ceramic heat emitter within a dome. This is probably what most people are going to lean to and it's what's going to work best for most people's setups within this tank and i'll show you a little bit more as we go um, we've also got under tank under tank heating pads pretty generic this one happens to be made by exoterra you can get these in any pet store you can get heat tape um, any reptile supplier is going to have this um, another standard we need a temp gun and you're going to see why in a minute why this is so important but uh, this is one of the most handy tools you can have if you keep any kind of reptiles at all. And since we're talking about heat sources, these always come off. This is a heat rock. This is old technology. It used to be the standard for so many animals. The best thing you can do with these is to cut the cord off and keep them as decoration. If someone gives this to you, please don't use it. And I'm going to show you exactly why. Now, before we dig too deep into any source of heating, I need to point out everything that you buy from the store, whether it be a dome, an under tank heater, any form of appropriate heating is going to have a wall plug wired onto the end of it. It will fit in your wall socket. Do not plug them straight into the wall. Every single device here is meant to be run on a dimmer switch for a ceramic heat emitter or preferably a thermostat. Now a thermostat is going to have a heat sensor that you can put inside your tank and it is going to kill the power once it reaches the temperature you are intending. They are, while they do plug into the wall, they're not designed to operate that way. It can potentially be very hazardous to your animal. And here's why. 
This is a Zoomad Labs heat rock, exactly what you can find in any pet store. Now the problem with the heat rock is that the heating element is inside of it, and all of these nooks and crannies, and how deep or how thick this actually is till you get to the heating element, change the temperature that this rock puts out. So, if we take in this room right now, it's right around 80 degrees ambient. And if we start on the bottom corner of this rock, eh, we're finding temps eh, 84 degrees-ish over here. However, as we start to get up to this end here, we're climbing over 100, and we hit 108 degrees. Now that's a 22 degree difference across this six inches of rock. Now, even if we had this regulated, we may be regulating it to this spot here, but the problem is this spot here is 108 degrees. So if we regulate it here, this is still hot. And if we regulate it here, then this is too cold and it doesn't function. Now this rock's been plugged into the wall without a thermostat for about an hour because this is about the way people run them. 108 degrees in this spot here will burn your animal over time before its core temperature comes up to the point that it is capable of digesting. So since we've ruled out the heat rock, we'll go to the under tank options first. Now we talk about the under tank pads and we talk about the heat tape itself. Now they work very well in say a PVC enclosure or racking system where they're good insulators, thin layer of substrate. With a lot of glass tanks, if you're not using paper towels or a thin substrate layer, the heat from these does not penetrate the substrate to where it needs to be. In other words, if you've got half an inch of substrate here, you may be able to get the heat up to where it needs to be. But if you're running two or three inches of substrate, you're running a bioactive enclosure, anything similar to that, the issue is, is that you have to have this heated up so far that by the time it gets to the surface, the temperature is fine. But if your snake burrows down to the bottom of your enclosure and gets right up to the bottom, up against the heat pad, this heat pad is going to burn them. It is going to be too hot. So we look at options that are above the surface, which is why we're into a ceramic heat emitter. Um, there is radiant heat panels as well. With glass tanks, they're not the best option. Back to, they're not good insulators. So honestly, the best thing you can do in a glass tank is to run a ceramic heat emitter. Now, ceramic heat emitter does, not, does have its downfalls as well. Since it's heating from the top down, it needs to heat the air before it heats the surface. So if we take our temp gun again, and we got this turned on, and I take a temperature on the cool end of this tank, we're around 72 degrees. Now, this ceramic heat emitter has been on for about an hour. It's on a dimmer, and it's turned all the way up. And if I put a temp gun on it here, I get a high hot spot of just over 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, it's been on at 700 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour. And we have a hot spot at this end of about 80 degrees. Now, if we go back here and double check, uh, most of this is about 75 degrees. So after being on for an hour, this is heated up this end of the enclosure, five degrees at the surface, which means for this room at this ambient temperature, this heat emitter is likely not enough. It probably needs a larger dome, a larger wattage bulb to bring the temperature up in here. Now the issue becomes we use the cocoa husk because it raises the humidity within the tank. As this heats up the air, it also burns off the humidity. So while on the cool end, the humidity may be appropriate, on the hot end where our snake is going to want to digest, where it's going to spend a lot of its time to build up its energy, this end is going to have very low humidity. And when it's bouncing back and forth like that, it is not the greatest situation. So what we need to do is we need to keep the humidity in. So since we've decided that we're going to use a glass tank and we're going to use a ceramic heat emitter as our heat source, we've got our coconut thing in here, which is going to help with the humidity. What we need to worry about now is keeping the heat and the humidity within this enclosure. Now, on the front side, we can't really do anything. You know, the reason that we use glass tanks is because we can see inside of them, we can put our animal on display. 
Obviously, we don't want to block off the front of the tank, but the sides and the back. You read on the forums people telling you to black them out. That's for the security. It actually has a small token of insulation factor, but if you're going to use paper, the better step would be to go to your hardware store, get some kind of foam board insulation. Um, in the summertime, you can buy disposable coolers. They are quite literally styrofoam. Styrofoam is actually a very good insulator. That's why it's used in coolers. Anything like that taped along the sides is not only gonna give your animal some security, but it's also going to help keep that temperature contained within these glass walls. On the top, most of these enclosures have a metal mesh lid and everybody knows these lids, they're the cause of so many nose rubs. If you're blocking it off, not only does it keep the humidity in, the way we do it here also helps maintain your heat, but it also blocks it out so that it doesn't look like they can get out of it. They're not going to push as hard into it. So what we use is foil tape. This is duct tape, not duct tape. You know, the rubberized stuff that everybody knows. This is actual duct tape. It is foil, it is very sticky, it is reinforced. What we wanna do with this is we literally wanna take this stuff, you can't tear it, you have to cut it. We're gonna lay it out and tape the entire lid. Do it with your light, your heat emitter off, tape the entire lid, drop the heat emitter on, trace the circle out, cut that out, tape off everything that is not covered by your, your lamp's dome. What that's going to do is because this is actually a heating product for your home, this is going to keep the humidity within your tank where it needs to be. It stops this from burning it off and dropping your humidity dangerously. And because it is foil, it actually helps insulate it some and gives some of the R value back to this tank. Now this is just like your home, it's putting good shingles on your roof. It is every little thing we do to this tank is helping it be better. Okay, so since we've got our tank sorted out, imagine that this was covered in foil with three sides blocked out, filled in with some kind of foam insulation. Keeps all your temps and humidity in here. We've got some good bedding in here. The next thing we're going to talk about is water dishes. Water dish is going to be the most critical piece of furniture you can put inside of this. Now you can go up to the pet store, you can get something like this from Exoterra. We get these from the dollar store. These are dog bowls. These are ramekin dishes. I love these for hatchlings. They don't flip over. My boa constrictors, I actually use dish pans. Buy them at the dollar store. You want a nice big water dish. It doesn't matter what animal we're talking about here. 90% plus of what we keep will probably crawl, crawl into the water dish at some point in time. A big water dish is never going to hurt it. And if you take your water dish and you have problems maintaining humidity, you can put your water dish under your heat source, which will actually help boost the humidity. The nice thing about having a coconut substrate is that if you're using paper towel or something and your snake tips over your water dish, it is an instant full clean of the entire enclosure. Coconut is a little bit more forgiving. It will soak up that extra moisture and let it burn off slowly. So we get a big water dish in there. We want to put a hide in there. I mean, another, this is probably from Exoterra or something similar. It's a big rock one. I use oil drain buckets with a notch cut out of them. People use Rubbermaid containers. Basically anything that your snake can comfortably fit inside. And you don't need to go too big. They're actually quite comfortable wedged up inside the sides of these things. You'd be surprised at how big of a snake will actually be comfortable inside of this. They do like feeling contained. So we get a water dish. We get a hide. I mean, a lot of people will put something like this in. Now, snakes and skulls kind of go together. Everybody likes snakes and skulls, or at least most people. The biggest thing to watch out for is this might be great for a hatchling ball python, a small corn snake. This is no good for an adult ball python because the opening in the bottom is nice and big. The opening through the eyes is small. And this one in the back is jagged and medium sized. Now, if your snake can go through it, it will. If it can get halfway through it, it will get stuck. You need to make sure that whatever you're putting in there, if you want to put a skull in there, make sure there is no possible way it can get its head through and stuck. Believe me, you will regret it. It may look cool now. It may tick you off in the future. 
pick items to go inside the tank that you can sterilize. Make sure that you're not just digging it out of the backyard. Make sure it's something you can clean, that you don't have to worry about parasites and chemicals. Make sure you can take it out and sterilize it. We want to make sure that we can clean the environment that our animals are living in. It's, we want it to be visual appealing to us. The primary concern is safe for them. Now with everything set up, this is kind of what you'd have sitting in your living room. Obviously, this is a little bit different because it's not completely set up and I'm showing you this for demonstration purposes. And in reality, the general minimum standards for a snake by the local standards, most of the places that we live, is that your enclosure should be length plus width is equal to or greater than the length of your snake. Now going by that math, this enclosure here, it, this snake is about four inches too long to be inside of this enclosure. So it is a reasonable guesstimation of the smallest enclosure that this animal should be in by standards. And realistically, we'd all like to see the animal in a bigger enclosure than this. When it's laid out like this, it's easy enough to tell that this enclosure is probably a little bit small for it. But this will give you a basic breakdown on how to set things up how to use everything the way it needs to be and a few of the tricks you can use to make everything better. So uh, have a great night. Ask me about my big snake and I'll talk to you guys again soon.